Thousands of students across the country have walked out of their classrooms again today in the latest climate change strikes. They want the government to declare a climate emergency. It's something dozens of councils have already done. Greg Dawson has been to Bath, the latest place to declare a climate emergency. Bath, UN World Heritage Site, home to 90,000 people and the latest place in the UK to declare an emergency. Last night, the council became the latest of dozens in recent months to approve a motion declaring a climate emergency. Like many others, it's committing to becoming carbon neutral by 2030. Nicola Taylor was one of those involved in the campaign. I'm expecting my first child in a couple of months. She could quite feasibly be alive in 2120. And if we carry on the trajectory that we are on at the moment, I can't even imagine what the world will be like. Bath has one of the highest levels of pollution in the UK. Nicola is part of the direct action group Extinction Rebellion, who last week threw fake blood outside Downing Street, claiming it symbolised the death of future generations. I think a lot of people might look at you and say, you don't look like much of a rebel. <laughs> no, this isn't. I haven't been very politically active before. I'm just a regular middle class person who lives in a beautiful lucky enough to live in this beautiful city. I want to be able to look my daughter in, in, the, in the eyes in the future and say that I tried to do something. What do we want? Where do we want it? Yeah. The campaign's been given extra momentum by a series of youth climate strikes involving students walking out of class to call on the government to declare an emergency at a national level. Hamish Evans helps coordinate the strikes in Bath. He's been living on his houseboat since he was 16, partly to help reduce his carbon footprint. So this is home? Yes, this is home, yeah. So this is the one room. Won't be my boat's powered by solar. I've been thinking a lot about my diet recently. I'm trying to really simplify the foods I eat and just eat from the land cooperative, which is just up here. It's community agriculture. You can go to the rivers, see they're polluted. You can go to the roads, see that they're twice the legal limit of pollution. Um, you can go and see you know, our forest being chopped down quite close by. This bird song here in the morning soon, it's, you know, it's already decreasing. Uh, not going to hear it in the future. This wave of councils declaring emergencies was triggered by a UN report on climate change, warning there were just 12 years left to avoid an environmental catastrophe. Bath may be the latest place to declare, but just a few miles down the track is the first. Back in November last year, Bristol made history by becoming the first part of the UK to declare a climate emergency with that target of becoming carbon neutral by 2030. It's ambitious and there are still lots of questions over how it's going to be achieved. I'm scared, I'm worried, I'm frustrated that the majority of UK politicians are not doing enough. Carla Denyer is the Green councillor who wrote the motion, inspiring dozens of other councils to follow suit. It's like a juggernaut that we have to turn around, which means we need to start right now. But just how realistic is it that Bristol, a port city, can become carbon neutral in little over a decade, especially considering this? There are plans now underway to expand the airport in the city. At the moment, Bristol's mayor has a position of supporting airport expansion while also supporting the declaration of the climate emergency. I and fellow Greens have tried to persuade him otherwise. As yet, we haven't been successful. If, he, if the airport expansion goes ahead, is carbon neutrality by 2030 as a target dead in the water? It would be very, very difficult. I'm just wondering how much faith do you have that in 11 years' time Bristol will be carbon neutral? I'm sure it's going to happen because it needs to happen. Next week, at least two more councils are expected to follow the trend that began here. The campaigners admit declaring the emergency is the easy part the much bigger challenge, implementing the ideas to tackle it. It sounds great um, and it sounds like an emergency, but what does it actually mean in practice? Well, I know it's sacrilege to say it on this programme, but this issue is a thousand times more important than Brexit. This is our existential That's crisis. why we're discussing it. Well, great. I'm delighted we are. Should but I'm talking about climate emergency. Climate emergency, exactly. And I'm trying to explain why this is a climate emergency. We're on course, business as usual, for about four degrees of global warming this century, which is 
catastrophic. That means that large parts of the Earth become uninhabitable. It means the collapse of living systems. It means huge numbers of refugees, people kicked out of their homes. It means the collapse of food supplies. This, this isn't something to mess about with. This is something to put right at the top of the political agenda and take very rapid, immediate and drastic action on. But what declaring a climate mm. emergency in Bath and Bristol, how, how is that going to mitigate any of the things you've just outlined? Well, in itself, it doesn't, but it's where you start. And okay. so the idea is that the declarations of emergency spread across the country. We want the whole country to declare a, 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 an emergency. So in other words, we want the government of this country to say, this is an emergency, we're now taking emergency measures, we're going to be pressing other governments alongside us to take emergency measures as well, we should treat this with the seriousness it deserves. No government on earth, with the possible exception of Costa Rica, is currently doing that. I mean, what I'd like to ask you, George, if I may, mm. Joe, is, is what impact is this going to have on the ordinary person in Bath and these other cities? What does it mean for taxpayers? Is there going to be a cost involved? Um, I mean, I, I, it's all very well sounding very virtue signal and saying, let's declare a climate emergency. But how in practice is it actually going to make a difference? This is not virtue signaling. This is the most important issue okay, on Earth. And if you describe it and dismiss it no, as no, virtue no, signaling, I'm talking about Bath, it suggests you have saying, no conception you did use of the what is important did, and what I is did. not. I'm saying if Bath says, so what is oh, the impact? We, we have to declare yeah, a climate I'll emergency. What does that actually mm. mean in practice? It does mean changes. It means very rapid changes, but it's not changes we can do by ourselves. We need intervention from cities, from government. So, for example... Yeah, but what are they going to do? Uh, me, are they going to bring in will, measures Will you like let we... me answer this question, or do you want to just carry on? Um, what, for example... We're talking about a massive reduction in car travel and replacement with electric mass transit, with bicycles, with walking, which is great for dealing with climate, but also for dealing with air pollution, for resource use, for congestion, for time wasting, space wasting, so all the other things that cars do. So basically, we're going to see motorists penalised again and have extra taxes. No, we're going to have a situation we're going to like see, we've got here in London. We're going to with see people charge. having much more efficient transport networks and we currently Now we're getting have. to the heat. This is what needs to happen. We need to have a much better public transport system before we're going to encourage people out of our cars. We have to do both at the same time. Do you support the idea of actually starting a conversation of making it publicly visible that this should be treated like an emergency? It shouldn't be treated like an emergency. It is an emergency, and I absolutely agree with George. If you look at the UN report that came out in October that was, you know, signed off by 195 countries saying that this is an emergency, the 12-year report is serious. We're talking about the devastation of the insect population, which then means all that for plants and crops. I mean, this is, this is serious, and it should be number one across the world as the agenda. But we have different countries who are flat earthers who are denying the report and denying that actually it has any um, sort of weight, but it does. And this, I think the problem is saying it's an emergency and actually doing something, you need emergency measures that equate to the emergency. And I think at the moment, there's an awful lot of talking and cars and reducing, that's just one thing. It actually has to be the biggest, most difficult conversation for politicians is to say to people, this means lifestyle changes. Ah, and that um, is the what biggest would they be? What would they be, those lifestyle changes that are needed? Well, we've just gone vegetarian in our house uh, as a result <laughs> Congratulations. of... Congratulations. Well, I say that. I mean, my wife's gone vegetarian. Ah. Uh, <laughs> OK, so oh, not the whole family. I'm you... trying to get there. She's I'm trying to get there. Yeah, exactly. She's offsetting Some me Some people in our household have gone vegan. Well, so, yeah, oh, that's, that's a tough one. Well, actually, I mean, this is a serious point. It's serious. Because, because the two things we can uh, there's not much we can do as consumers mostly we have to do it as citizens getting political change but the two big things we can do a switching to a plant-based diet and b changing our transport habits and one of those things mm. is much less flying flying is a huge carbon impact even just one seat on a transatlantic flight and you've pretty well used up your carbon budget for a year well, why have they expanded the airport exactly. well exactly yeah, that's 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 well, that, 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 that is exactly the, the right question to be asking mm. why are we still building fossil fuel infrastructure when we ought to be leaving fossil fuels in the ground but does that undermine your message of a, of yes. a, of a climate emergency no, no, declaration all it says, you've got the same council yeah, saying we're, sure. we're going to expand I mean, the airport look, all it says is they're not thinking it through and they're not doing this systemically which is what we but need if to it's, do this is a problem they're not thinking it through there's a strategy there. But isn't it part of the issue that the technology isn't there either? I mean, if there was an easy solution to say we could we could expand the airport whilst using different technologies to make it mm. greener, mm. whilst also getting the yeah. benefits of expanding the airport, that's fine. But they've got to take the decision that's in front of them. But because there's no substitute, because there's no substitute for, for, for flying, um, then the only 
answer here is to fly less. And I'd There's no technological agree with you. I'd alternative. I absolutely agree with you, George. And this is why, you know, go, go back to my question. What can Bath do when we've got major government policy to expand a, a, airports, not just here, but in, in Heathrow as well? It's absolutely well, So it has to start somewhere. And, and, and so by, by Bath and Bristol and several other cities, incidentally, and some counties as well now, saying we declare a climate emergency, you build up the head of steam. Perhaps that's the wrong metaphor. <laughs> you, 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 you create the pressure, <laughs> which then um, in, ensures that government has to start taking this seriously. People's lost, jobs? Lost in all of this is the spring statement this week, because I know mm, no one yeah. spent any no, time. Well, we, we, did did we, did that, we did clock. The Chancellor did talk in the spring statement about building in sustainability. Long term. Lo yes, long term, and more can be done more quickly. Of course it can but all the time. But it's still not quick enough, because it's 12 but, years. But I do, <laughs> I, I do wonder whether in some of the... Um, criticisms you have, George, there is a, uh, a mixing of ideas here. Criticism of the media for not keeping it at the top of the agenda is a criticism of the media rather than the way in which the agenda has been. And, and that's fine, but if, if you're doing these kinds of protests for media attention rather than directing it in the right way to change policy, then I think people's support for it is going to well, be Well, Hofstadt, where's the contradiction? You know, the media's not giving this enough attention. Protests it help to ensure... Of attention, uh, actually. Protests help to it. ensure that it gets more attention, which is what it needs. I mean, the media has let us down appallingly, the BBC included on this. Not um, this programme, uh, though, which has done okay. this and the children's well, strikes I'm before. I'm delighted to hear it. And look, here they are, great. the and children's so, strikers. Yeah. Do you think they will so be a more potent weapon, do you think? Seeing children out of school protesting about their future? I, I honour and salute these children. They're fantastic. They're stepping in where previous Previous generations have failed. They are brave, they are remarkable, they're rem incredibly well informed. Um, I, I went to um, uh, the protest last month in my home city and, and I cried. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. It was one of the most moving things I've ever seen. You were looking sceptical. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I think these kids should be in school. Uh, I think if they want to protest, then absolutely fine, or credit to them, but why can't they do it on a Saturday? Because then it wouldn't I think it be says, a strike. I think it says that they're very happy to miss school, but not their football matches or their dance clubs. Oh, for I, God's I, sake. I, I, what oh, a well, dried-up misanthrope you are. Everyone erupts at this time. Have a lovely weekend from all of us here. Goodbye. Ha, 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 ha.